everybody. Welcome to Shelf Control. I'm Lisa. I'm Norm. And today we're talking about Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall. This was one of the random um, selected games for us to review. And we've got a few plays in. Got some three-player plays in. Did I say that right? Three-player three, plays it was in. Three, three-player plays. Three-player plays. So. We really wanted to get four or five because we feel like that'd be pretty cool. Um, but we didn't get an opportunity to get a couple others just with timings and things like that. So we can give our opinions on three players. Tammany Hall takes place... What's In New York. Okay, so most everyone may know that. I didn't. When he said it was Tammany Hall, I was like, okay, English. Between 1850 and 1870 is, uh, is when this takes place. Yeah, New York. Who knew? What you're doing is you're trying to get elected... So, so you can become mayor. and So, so it's kind of like an area control. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. Mm -hmm. You have the different uh, districts in, uh, in New York, and you're trying to get each district to vote for you so you could become mayor. The game is played over four years. So, And each year has four quarters. And at the very end of the year is when there's the election. And so uh, I think it's actually 16 years, every four years you have an election. Yes. That's better. That's America. That's what it is. And you every, don't, you yeah. don't get a mayor every year. Pity. On your turn, it's really simple. You've got all these different districts out here. And on your turn, you either take one of your ward bosses and put them in a district and then take one of the immigrants that's coming in through Castle Garden. And they're coming from either um, France, England, Germany, or Ireland. Ireland. Then the different color cubes <clears throat> that show who this is. So the green is, is Irish. And you can... Not France. Italy. Italy. Did I say France? You might have. I think I might have said France. It's Italy. And so you you place your ward boss in a district. And you place one of the immigrant cubes in a district. And it doesn't have to be the one that, that you placed your guy in. You could place it over here if you wanted to. But because you helped that immigrant find a home, you get... An influence. An influence in that color, which would be green in, in this, this case. And so that shows that you have some influence over, over the Irish. And each four years, um, there's only a certain section of... The map open and then when you get to the next four Depending years Depending on the number of players right and it's listed down here under under the year so in three players there's only the first district that has uh seven one two three four five six six areas only six areas are, are what you're going to be yep so the first section so the rest of the map is not going to be populated at all and then when you get into the second period here in the three player game, the second place opens up. And then in the in the three player game, the third area opens up for uh, for the last two years in a uh, four five player game. They're all available right at the beginning. Oh, so all. And so all yeah. years. Okay. So it, it it's kind of nice. <clears throat> it it restricts you down and you populate this area first and then this one opens up and then you can start and so if it was starting out wide open then uh, yeah it'd be it'd be kind of a that'd be interesting it'd be kind of a mess because you can only take four actions before an election so there'd be districts that nobody is in so on your turn that that's all you do is you place one guy and an, an immigrant or you can choose to place two guys down. They, they don't have to go together. Yep, you can so, break them up or put them in the same district. And the reason why you might want to keep them together is each ward boss counts as a vote in the, in the election. But you might want to have them spaced out so you could have more presence in each district when the elections come. Mm -hmm. so, so when the elections come... Can I talk about that, or do you have other things to say? Oh, there's there's more that you can do on, on your turn. So the basic is placing a guy and an immigrant and getting an influence of that color. 
or putting two down. But if you have it, the first election, you can't do this because nobody's been elected mayor yet. But depending on who's elected mayor, you might be given a uh, city office and it has a power on it that, that you can do. And that's another thing you can do during your turn that doesn't take one of those, those two actions. It's a free action. You can do the, the power that you're given or you can slander somebody. And uh, the, the slander is a little bit more difficult because you have to have, you need to be, have your ward boss in an area with somebody else's ward boss and have influence over one of the immigrant cubes yep. in that area. So, so you have to have an influence of an immigrant in that area and you have to have your ward boss in there with someone else's. And so what I'm doing <clears throat> is you're slandering the other the other player. And so you have your ward boss in there. There's a green cube, so I would spend one green influence that goes away and I spread a lie about this guy and they kick this ward boss out of that area. You know, so very political game. Well, that sort of sounds like how I got elected. And then you've only got three slander discs that you can use and you can only use one per election uh, period per, per election period and you can't use it in the first one you can do what they call a double slander if you happen to have a similar situation it's the same person and the same immigrant right. group so you're slandering the same person using the same influence for the same immigrant. So let's say on this one, he did Irish. So the first slander, he's gonna discard one Irish influence to get rid of his opponent in that first section. In the other region, he would have to discard two Irish influences to get rid of that pers that same person. So you I have, have to, to have three. A, I have to use a little bit more influence to convince yep. the people in the neighboring district. So you need a total of three, slant, uh, three influence tokens of the same immigrant to be able to get rid of the same two ward bosses. But um, it would get rid of two of that yep. person's ward bosses and, and open it up. <clears throat> of course, on their turn, they could always just place a ward boss back. Right. But if you time it right, it can be really good. The, the cost of losing the influence tokens can be pretty costly because when elections happen. So when an election happens, so at the end of the four years, it's an election. You're then going to go through, and what's really good is this board maps everything out, maps all your steps out for the game. So you can have just the board in front of you and be able to play without the rule book for the most part. So when an election happens, you're going to start with number one district and you're going to go through each one. Whoever has the most influence in there is going to get um, the is going to claim that section. So in this one, I'm in one, and Norm is in there. So we each have one ward boss in there, and from that point, we have immigrants from um, Italy and Germany. So I would take all of my Italy and Germany um, tokens, and he would take all of his tokens of the same countries. And we would compare them. So I'd say, okay, I have five. And he'd say, okay, I have four. Well, then we're secretly going to decide how many of those influence tokens we're going to use to try to get control of that region. And then we put so our we'll hand out. Put our hand out, we'll reveal, and whoever has the most influence will win that um, territory. And the, the winner will stay. The loser gets kicked out. Leaves. If she happened to have two ward bosses there and I had one, she would start with two votes to my one. Right, so I already have the advantage, but then we would still count up the votes from the immigrants that are so in that region. So if I had a lot more influence, <clears throat> I could spend more than yep. her to win. And whatever you're using for influence, you lose. So even that, if that you goes lose. away, even if you lose the votes. So you gotta be really careful because there's so many other districts that you're going to potentially have to fight for. So you need to kind of conserve your influence tokens to the best advantage. And so if she beat me, I would have to leave. And, and then would... I would take away one of my ward bosses. So the winner keeps one ward boss there. And then you go to the next um, district and you do the same thing. And you keep doing that through every district until that's resolved. 
and whoever has the most, well, at that point, then we'll go back through each district we'll and see how many points everybody gets. You get one point for every district that you've won, two points if you win Tammany Hall, which is marked on the board, mm -hmm. and then whoever owns, controls the most districts becomes the mayor. And this is where it gets tricky. And if you're the mayor, you get three points. Mayor so that's good. just says plus three points. So boom, I get <clears throat> I get plus three points. And then the mayor also goes through each um, office position and decides who's going to get what position. And that's where so, the, that's where the rub comes in. I'm going to be mayor. If I'm mayor, I'm going to decide who is going to be the council president. And they have a special ability for the next four years of every time it's their turn, you can choose to lock up a ward twice a term. So you're going to get these extra little um, pieces, and on your turn, you can lock down a ward, which means nobody else can place a ward boss in there, and nobody and can take boss, out influence from there. And you can't remove cubes or, add. or move cubes. So that place is locked down. So that's what the council president can do. You only have two of those, so you have four turns in a uh, election period, but you can only do that two times, so you'll have to be kind of uh, strategic in that. Another position is the precedent chairman. You may move one immigrant, immigrant cube to any adjacent ward on your turn. If it's the last immigrant in that district, you cannot remove it. So here... There's three immigrants here. There's two from England and one from Ireland. If I'm in here and I don't have any English influence, but he has a lot, I can decide, I can choose to move that English one to an adjacent district. And so now he's kind of lost a little bit in there. So you kind of want to play that out to your advantage. And you can do that once per turn. The next one is chief of police. You can arrest an immigrant from any ward as long as it's not the last immigrant in that ward. And that's just removing him off the board completely. He doesn't go anywhere else, you arrest him. He's going to jail. And then the last one is deputy mayor. So you gain one political favoritship of any color each turn. So if I'm, if I'm the deputy mayor, I want to build up some influence in um, Italy. Each turn I'll say, okay, Italy. And I'll get one of those from the supply I'll get a, a blue cube and I'll lay Not it down. a blue cube. Oh, I'm sorry. A blue influence token. And I'll get to keep that in my pile. So that, that will be help able me. To use the, mm -hmm. for the election. And you can use that once per turn. So the mayor, you get three points, but you don't have these cool abilities that you can do on your turns. You have to give each of your opponents one of these <clears throat> really powerful abilities. So in a you three don't player, get an ability. Yep. You got three points. You just which got three is points. Great for getting closer to winning, but then you have to hand out the tools that your opponents need to beat you for the next election. And that's that's rough when you're like, okay, I don't want I don't want you to use that. 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 Okay, crap, I gotta I gotta give these to somebody. So in a three player game, I'm the mayor. I'm only using two of these to give out to the two other players. So that's why we would really love to have this. We would try this at a five player because then all of these positions are out. out. all of these and powers. And that'd be, that'd be pretty cool to play a game that way, but we haven't had that opportunity. Yeah, because playing still, with the two players, you could be like, okay, you know, I, I would generally, if, if I was mayor, whoever had the worst board position... I would give them the council president, which allows them to lock up to two places because they might only control two places. And it'll be like, fine, if you want to lock those two places, that's that's fine. You're still going to have to fight for, for mm -hmm. that. And so you know, <clears throat> that, that one I'd, I'd give away to someone to where it doesn't hurt me that bad. And then I'd have to think about, okay, which one of these other ones am I going to give the other person? Which one doesn't help them the most? But... In a five-player game where all four of these are coming out, then I have to really think, okay, who's going to be the strongest with these? And, and I'll be honest, I've, I've, I've never been mayor. I suck at politics. So I've never had to make that decision. I can also, uh, because I've never been mayor, I've never won this game in all the times we've played it. So I am, uh, 
I can proudly stand that I am not a political person. Um, so I'm, I'm take pride in that. So that's what happens if you're elected mayor. So you're, we're still at the end of that election period. You then determine, so after you've done scoring, after you've um, been elected mayor and you distribute the positions, you then find out who has the most influence on the board of a particular country. So at that point, they get to start the next election period with the advantage. So they'll get, if I had the most Irish influence on the board, so that means I control a lot of districts that have the green cubes. If I have the most green cubes out there, then I start the next election period with four. Three. Three? three. I thought it was three. Four. I would start the next election period with three Irish influences in whatever bank I still have from the last election. And then you go and determine who's got England, who's got Germany, who's got Italy. And then those people will each get three of those influences. <clears throat> so before the next election, you can have a big pile of influence over here. Yep. And then you do the exact same thing over the next election period, and then the next one, and then the very last one. And whoever's the furthest in scoring, of course, the last election period, if you're mayor, you get three points, but you're not having to give out these positions again. So um, you then see who's ever got the most scores, and whoever has the most scores wins the game. With the having the most control out on the board of, of people. That's where being able to <clears throat> move an immigrant to an adjacent ward or removing one from the board can be really big. Because it's like, okay, Lisa did have a bunch of the Irish and got the three influence for it. I need to make sure she doesn't do that again. So if I have the the police chief, I'm ar arresting the Irish from her uh, from Poor her Irish. Areas. What did the Irish do? So it's not the Irish, it's you. So... But again, that's, I'll never, I'd never survive in politics, ever. And I'm okay with that. So that's the game. So It's, it's very simple, simple rule set. Every, every round, you're just, if you have a city office benefit, you can use it. If you have a slander chip, you can use it if you want. And then you're either putting one or two people down. And, and that's, that's basically it. Or you're placing it. an immigrant, and you're getting an influence token. So... That's that's how the game works. The and you turns don't have, are very fast. And we, we on the board also at the start of the game, you have a certain number of immigrant tiles or immigrant cubes in these sections. So at the end of the first election period. At the beginning of at it. the beginning of the first election period, you take those that are in here and you just and that's what's going they, they populate this randomly. I'm gonna get to all this. I'm I'm gonna get to it. So they're gonna populate this randomly, is what I said the first time. Uh, we noticed. And then that's how you start out. And then you always have, is it four or five in here? It's always two more than the number of players. Okay. So in a three player game, it'd be five here. So as soon as this empties out, which is um, basically um, Liberty Island. This was Ellis Island before it was Ellis Island. They, people would come in through uh, Castle, Castle Garden. Garden. So that's where all the immigrants would come through. So there's going to be immigrants there. If I happen to place the last one, it will refresh at with the, five new ones. At the start of the next person's turn. So that they can choose to put those out as well. So again, you, you're, you're starting out with some of these, and they're random. So in the first instance, you could have just gotten, it could have all been Italy. It could have just been Italy and England. And at the, the start of the game, the only colors that, will get populated are the orange, white, and green. So the blues yeah. only enter the board through Castle Garden. Yep, Italy comes so in through. If you don't draw them out of this bag, then the Italians aren't, aren't coming to, to New York. And we need the Italians in New York. Where would New York be without the Italians? Look, we need an Italian to do this. One thing that I really like about this, <clears throat> it is all on the board. I already said that. Like the sequence of play. Here is what you what you do on your turn. First thing you do, you check to see if the garden is is empty. If the garden's empty, you repopulate it. And then you can use a city office. Here's the two actions you can do. You can do a slander chip. And then here's the trigger, what you do at the end of uh, end of the year. And end of the year or end of the election period? So this is end end of year. Okay. So uh 
I think it says, yeah, if it's the end of the term, then you have the election. Okay. So it, it explains everything here. And then here is the scoring after, the, after each election. Here's the scoring after the final election. If everyone's scattered around the table and you don't know what each power does, the powers are listed right here, what, what they do. Mm -hmm. After you read the rule book, you really don't need to open it up again because it's all right, right here. It's, or you're like me and you just never open any rule book ever as a rule of thumb. So I really like I really like the, the <coughs> map. Uh, it has arrows pointing telling you the order that, that you're gonna do your elections in. Uh, it's Yep. It's it's such a simple game. I love it when they can put stuff on the board or on on your player pieces themselves things that stop stop you from having to go into the rule book and the rule book's not terrible either it's, no it's got six, six pages six pages and i mean that's not terrible the first page is just the overview and components and then you have the description of the board and then and then you have the yep. four pages of, of how to play so we talked a lot about our likes so do you have any additional ones to add, or did you cover additional most of them? likes. It really, it really brings across the political fighting that, that, that you're doing. It really feels like you're, you're back in the era of uh, uh, Boss Tweed, where you're, you're doing favors to, to the immigrants to get them on, on your side, and you're spreading lies about your opponents, and... Is that any different from today? So, they were better at it back then. <laughs> the each year and each election period goes pretty quick. The tur the turns go really really quickly. It's a it's a quick game. So I mean you do it does take a little bit of strategy and a little bit of time after that first election because then you have your powers. You have to be a bit strategic if you're locking districts down or if you're arresting people so you, that takes a little bit more time that first election period or that first term goes goes really quickly and the rest go fairly quickly it's with the simple rule set i will say that <clears throat> how the game plays is not easily apparent yeah because you're first looking at this board and all you have is my control one cube in each each spot and then so you're you're looking at the board like that and it's like okay on your turn go and what? it's like i could put one guy down and one guy from here or i could put two of these down you know but what's what's the what's the benefit it's like you you got to play it a little bit and then like going through the first four years and then having the election, then you're like, oh, I see what I yep. did wrong and why I didn't win any districts. And So the, the following three terms is really where you're starting to play the game, really starting to get your um, your groove. One thing we didn't mention is the first, I think the, four. the first four districts give you a bonus if you have that, um, if you win the election in that one. So the first one that if, if you win there, you get a, a cube of your color, of you your choice. You pick a, a cube of whatever color you want And you the put it wherever you want. Wherever. And you can put it in a district that hasn't scored yet to give you a better chance there. And you so, could put it in a spot where, like if I had a bunch of German influence and I was getting ready to battle somebody in a district without German, I could <clears> put... <throat> A German in there now my German influence will count yep and so winning these first four can put you in a position to help you win the others yep. so the first two districts you get a cube an influence cube to place somewhere and then the third and fourth districts just give you an influence token of your choice so again that can help you in later areas that you may not have enough influence in so I will say what probably takes the most time is at the end when you're determining who's winning each district, just the battle between everyone who's in there. So it could be in three players, all three of us have in have um, a presence in that district. So we're going to fight it out. We're going to see who wins that election. So we're taking all of our influence 
and we're determining, you have to disclaim how many you have that you can potentially add to your votes, but then you're secretly going to decide how many you need to use. And you still got to remember the other battles, the other elections you're going to be having this round to make sure you don't use all of them up right away and then you're screwed. You're not going to be able to, to really partake in the next election. That's another thing I really like about this game. All the information is available for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like you know where people are going to vote, <clears throat> we're going to have to uh, have contest and contesting over these different districts, and you know what influence everybody has. So, fighting in this first district, it's like how much of this am I willing to use? Yeah. But you also got to think, okay. If I'm competing against Lisa here, she's got three more elections coming up. How much is she willing to put in? Yep. Because I might be like, you know what? I'm willing to let this one go. You know, it's it's like I have enough where it's like if I put in three, all my three influence, I could win this. And so she might be like, okay, I need to put in four to make sure that I win it. But do I want to sacrifice those four but if, if I have other if areas? If she does four and I decide I don't want it and I'm giving up nothing, she wins that district, but now she's in trouble for, for future ones because I've still got my influence. Yep. And so all the information is out there. The only thing that you, you're not sure of is what the other people are going to be doing. Yep. And I, and so I, that's, I, I like that. That's what takes a little bit of the time in the game is just trying to figure out who's winning these elections because you're strategically trying to figure it out. So that's that's fun. It's really fun to do that. The first the first <clears throat> game we played with, with your sister, she won a lot of districts right at the beginning. And then I found it was really hard to kick her out of those districts. She was the mayor <clears throat> at every single election. And she won. And she won. Um, and of course, I was way back here in points, and she's across the board. And but then at the end of the game, I did come back some, but not enough to to win or take over. And I think we did a little bit of math, and had Norm maybe won the mayor, want mayorship, whatever, one time, there there was a chance it, it he could have won. Could have made a yep. difference. So um, I think you, you got to weigh it out. But I think being mayor does help. It does give you a bit of that kick because you're getting a lot of the influence already. You already have such a presence on the board. You're getting three points for free each round, so it it does it does add up. <clears throat> three points is a lot. Yeah, because that's twelve points over a game if you win all all four elections, and the score track goes up to to forty, and we never got we haven't gotten there yet. We never got there, so twelve points that could be half of your points that game. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a big deal. So what about your dislikes? You need you need more people. Yeah, that's that's the only thing. We we you can't play it two player. No, and three player is is fun. I the way that they they break it up into chunks where it's this and then next year it's this and then the last two years it's all three. They do a really good job of keeping it keeping it tight and giving you that, but you don't get to pl you don't get all of these out. It, it feels like you're 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 missing some of the pain that the game can give you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which <laughs> and I is want, that a negative? But I, I, yes. <laughs> I, I, I want that. I want I, I want the pain. It'd be nice to experience the the true vision of this game of having five players. So we'll get there. Yeah, and I think you know we've we've got games that play up to five players. We play them a lot at, at two player, and some of them are like. I wouldn't want to play with more than three. Right. The time involved would just be insane. It, it increases the time. This game is like so quick and it seems like it would just improve so much more with those yeah. those people. I would, it would I add wanna, a, I want to play this with five. It would add a little bit of time, but not not so much where some of those other games adding more players would, would increase it by hours potentially. No, not this game at all. No, oh, and it's it's adding it's adding more game. Yeah. It's it's not adding more downtime it's adding more puzzle to the, yeah to there's the, to not the game. there's not much downtime at all on this game because you're having to watch what they're doing because you have to strategically figure out where your next placement is what you're going to be doing on your turn <clears throat> so, 
So I, I think that the only problem I have with this game is really a problem with our gaming group as it stands right now, <laughs> where we don't get together in large groups very often. Right. And I mean, that's not the game's fault. No, not at all. So that's your only dislike? That's my only dislike. There's, all right. Let's well, score yeah. it. Pretty much the same. I'm really, really curious to see how this plays. It, again, I'm not, I'm not a political person. I, so is this, is this my interest? I mean, not necessarily, but the game plays well. So it's, I'm not really interested in, in area control um, as much. So in this game, eh, I lost it. Oh, well, big deal. So I'm not in it really competitively, but I enjoy the game. I would really like to see five players. I would like to see four players just to see how that changes from three. But I don't really have anything negative on the game. Okay. Score it. All right. So zero to seven for the, the gameplay, the mechanics, the rules, and stuff like that. I'm going to give it a full seven. I'm giving it a full seven, too. There's, there's really nothing you can change on it. The components are pretty... Are pretty awesome. They're little wooden meeples or wooden cubes or wooden influence. Um, color wise, everything you need is written on the board. So all your steps, everything you need to do for the game, how it's mapped out as far as the election periods, the terms. It it's it's a well thought out game. And what year was this? Um, this, <clears throat> this copy's two thousand nine. I don't. So it's it's not a new game. It's not it's not a new game, but it, it's for such a simple setup of it. It's a pretty intense game. It's impressive. To to me, this feels like like an evergreen game. Like this this game doesn't get old as as newer games come out. It they don't make this one look bad. Right. Agreed. The, Where the last few reviews we've done, time has really shown on those games. It's. This this game feels like the the designer did a really good job of pruning off anything that may have been in the game that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. Agreed. It's, it's like very very tight. The rules are very simple. It's the the mechanics are very very simple, but the depth comes from you're interacting with the other people at the table. Yep. There's a lot of that where it's like. Oh, if I can, if I can win that, I can put that one blue immigrant in there, and now all of a sudden my whole pile of blue is in play. In a five-player game, that like if you're the guy who can move somebody from a from a spot and be just like, I'm gonna move that one German immigrant out of there where you really wanted him, and I'm gonna move him <coughs> in here where I really want him. It, it seems like you can really do some clever stuff. I mean, you're gonna make people angry. You're going to have people yelling at you across the table. Yeah, that might be something that some people might dislike. Yeah. Because, yeah, you are actively trying to mess with everybody else's plans. You're not on your own little board building up my stuff and being no. like, I hope I can build my stuff better. Yeah, I'm trying it's to like, sabotage your political career. It's like, I'm, I'm going to make my position here stronger by telling lies about you and getting you kicked out. <laughs> and so... You'll have a, a plan in in effect, and somebody will be like, well, I'm going to arrest that one guy. And it's like, okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, I don't know what it's like in the four or five player game, but in the three player game, there was definitely times where it's like, you just did something to me. And the worst part about that is I'm now going to have to spend my turn fixing that. I was going to use my turn to make myself stronger over here, but now... I need to spend my turn doing this. And it's almost like you lose a turn. Yeah, and... because, oh, and it happens to be year four. So you're at the end of your uh, term. So you've got to, you've got to fix what they did. So you got to try, you got to try to anticipate what are, what are people going to be yep. doing and how, how can I protect myself? All right. So seven, seven from both seven. of us. Yeah. So wow factor one to three. Now um, mine is kind of conditional. Our our Firefly review had my my total was kind of conditional, but I think like for for a three player game I would give it a one. Mm. For a four or five player game, I'm gonna give it a two. We don't know. Yeah, I mean that that's that's just it. I'm like I really want to play this at four and five. 
a three player I'll, I'll i'll play it though there might be times where i get the itch where it's like yeah let's 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 do that we got three players let's go ahead and do it mm-hmm. but <clears throat> if i'm getting four or five people together this is going to be on the top of my list to, yeah. hit, to hit the table immediately. Yep. If we can get a few more like, people coming in. Yep. It's like, I want to try this and see if it is as good as it looks like it would be. Because it is fun at three. Like, this is a game that I would I would recommend, even though at three players I'm, I'm giving it a, a, an eight out of ten. That's still a really good rating and a really good game. For my wow factor, I would give it a one as well. So I would give it a score of an eight. So I I enjoy playing it. I do want to try it at four or five. Three is just fine. The three that we usually play with, just fine. Um, so yeah, I would give it I would give it a one there. I'm I'm not always going to be itching to play it, but I'm. It's it's enjoyable when I play. I'm just no good at it. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm going <clears> to <throat> give it the two. Because I want to play it at at higher player counts, and so we'll we'll see we'll see uh, maybe in the future we'll do a, a reevaluation of yeah. past reviews and and we'll we'll see after we get some four or five player games of this in how how it changes. But to me, this feels like one of those games that really should have more attention than it. Than I agree. It does. I had never heard of it. I don't know where it stands on some of the game reviews out there, but it's it's a good game. You know, I I think I, <laughs> I I kickstarted it when uh, I think this is the second printing when when they were coming out with it, and it was really interesting to me. But uh, they, I think they recently did a reprinting of this again, and and I've I've heard people say good things about it, like it's a, like it's uh, been on people's grail lists of games that they wanted when it was hard to get but like i i don't see this showing up on reviewers top 100 lists let mm-hmm. alone top top 10 lists and i i feel like it should be up there I somewhere feel like this should this should be up there like, so are we gonna <clears throat> so are we gonna give people the opportunity to potentially buy this game from us no no no, no. This is this this is almost like one of those that is like if you if you want a complete collection, this should be on your shelf. <laughs> this is the uh, hidden gem of your collection like, that you bring you know, out that, and surprise people because no one's ever heard of it. Yeah, you know, I think if you enjoy board games as like a that that's like the the history, the whole thing. You know that if you're collecting gems amongst all genres, I think this is one to have. If you don't enjoy this type of game, you don't need it on your shelf just to say that that you have it. But give it a try. Yeah, this that it's so so simple, and the depth of the game is just it's just hidden amongst the people that you're playing with. It's very true. I, I really like it. <clears throat> so, have you played Tammany Hall? Do you mm-hmm. like it? Have you ever heard of it? Are you? Wanting to play it now that now that you've watched this, give us your thoughts. Let us know what you think about it. And we're halfway through our eight randomly picked games to review. Yep. So uh, we'll be putting out re- reviews on the other four. Uh, let's see. We got um, cartographer, sheriff of Nottingham, uh, hummus, th- uh, haggis. I put it both ways. And uh, thunderstone. And so, so we'll be getting. Uh, so we have three left. And and Thunderstone. So we'll be three uh, left. We'll be making a video of that. We might have to get lots of plays of Thunderstone in before we uh, before we talk about that. So, if you're interested in uh, following our journeys, we play through our collection. Please subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, and like our videos. And uh, we appreciate those who have joined in and. Are coming with us for this ride and we just recently crossed 100 subscribers which that's big for us which is amazing we, we yeah. never we never <clears throat> expected that we're just we just thought it'd be fun to document our journey playing through our collection we didn't realize ever that we would hit 100 so thank you for that so what's our next review is it uh cartographers probably so i don't know we could do 
you could do cartographers or sheriff of nottingham those ones we've we've played quite a bit and uh you know maybe just a, a couple games refresher to to just get the nuances down and then we'll just have hummus and then we're done and then haggis and uh and thunderstone thunderstone quest all right so catch us catch us next week on one of those three and uh we'll see you then bye guys bye